Let's take a look at uh, parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, <clears throat> we've already looked at those in terms of transversals um, off of the coordinate grid that we already know that, um, you know, these are parallel lines, right? And part of what you and I studied um, is the business of, you know, alternate uh, interior angles, corresponding angles, and those types of things. Let's take a step now and jump into the coordinate grid with our knowledge about parallel and perpendicular lines and see what happens. So um, what we're going to bring with us from our knowledge about parallel lines is that if you have parallel lines, the slopes are equal, right? We know that. Like if you have this line and this line, they are parallel because their slopes are the same. And, um, and that is a huge or very important thing. So how do we add to this business about uh, equations of lines? Well, we just say something like uh, create a line that is parallel to y equals 3x plus 8 and goes through point uh, 4 and 1. So how do we come up with an equation that would be parallel to 1 and go through another point? Now, visually, what does that mean? Let's just show you what that means. I would have a graph here. Here's the a to slope of 3 like this. I would have this line. That's this guy. And I want to create one that goes through 4 and 1. In other words, I want to know what's the equation of the line that would be parallel to that one but go through 4 and 1 over here. So it would look kind of like this. We expect a very small or a negative um, intercept, don't we? Um, so how do we do it? Well, it's actually quite simple. With what we've learned about equations of lines, really we're going to steal this number for our slope. That would make our line parallel to that one. And we need to go through the point 4 and 1. This is what we've just reviewed, haven't we, with the equations of lines. One way to do this is slope-intercept form. And we know everything we know except B. We know M, we know an X, and we know a Y. So let's put in our Y, our slope, our X, our B. This is 1 minus 12 becomes negative 11. And as I predicted, we have a very large negative number, right? This is a slope of 3 and goes to negative 11. This would be the equation of a line that is parallel to the one they gave us, but went through the point 4 and 1. In other words, again, we had this kind of line, and now we have this guy, and it crossed down here at negative 11. Quite easy. Now, um, could I do another one? I could. I'm not going to. That one's quite simple. What we're going to do now, though, is the guy that's a little bit more interesting or tricky to us. That's the parallel group. Our perpendicular group, sorry. Now we need to probably talk about perpendicular first. Let's, let's get ready for that. Lines that are uh, perpendicular to each other, you know that that means a 90 degree relationship. What you may also need to know, you certainly need to know this, is that those slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So let's say this slope was a slope of... Uh, 3 over 2, okay, positive 3 over 2. To be perpendicular, you would have to be a negative reciprocal. This would be negative 2 over 3. And that creates perfectly that 90 degree angle. If we had a line like this and this slope was 3, the perpendicular slope then would be negative 1 third. These become negative reciprocals of each other. Be very careful about that. Um, some students will mess this up. Um, these are not perpendicular to each other. These are just two different slopes that intersect. Negative, now we have a positive negative reciprocal relationship. One of the tricky guys is this guy. A slope of 1 
and a slope of negative one. Those guys are negative reciprocals of each other. They don't look at necessarily, but they are. One would be a slope like this, and the other would be a slope like this. A slope of one and a slope of negative one. All right, we're ready for the equations now. So in the situation of an equation, we're gonna say, find me something perpendicular, this is our perpendicular symbol, to y equals negative one-third x plus eight that goes through the point, um, I don't know, two and negative four. So we're going to pull again a, a clue and that clue is hiding right here. We're gonna pull that slope. Now we're gonna pull the negative reciprocal because our line wants to be uh, perpendicular to that. Let's show you kind of again a visual of what we're doing. Um, we're at eight here, the slope went down one and ran three, so this is kind of this situation. And we are gonna go over two and down four and we want this situation. This would be our answer, this line right here. Let's give it a try. So our slope will be the negative reciprocal of this, which is three, and we're gonna go through two and negative four. So let's get this into our equation. Negative four goes in here, three here, two here, and when we move the, neg the six over it becomes negative 10. That makes sense. You see this is on its way down to hit a negative 10 here. So our answer would be, 3x minus 10. These two are negative reciprocals, so we are perpendicular to this, and we will go through that exact point. This is how we go about doing this. So really, this is kind of a review of, of this finding an equation of a line given some information, but ultimately we're pulling two characteristics. With parallel, they must be same slope, and with perpendicular, they must be negative reciprocal.